we welcome you to another exciting edition of the program Inside Cresciver. On this program, we let you in on everything happening in the Cresciver State landscape, in the private sector, in politics, and all other subsectors. Today, we are looking at the first year anniversary of Governor Bassett II in government as governor of Cross River State. And I have the privilege today to be speaking with His Excellency Clement Ebry, the former governor of Cross River State, to let us know, first of all, how we've done as a nation, how we've done as a state, and of course, his thoughts on the leadership of Prince Bassett II in one year. So, yeah, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you. Beatrice. All right. <laughs> all right so, uh, yes, let's see. Um, you are a very versatile person. So let's start with Nigeria. How have we fared as a nation? I want you to um, give me your own thoughts on how Nigeria has done politically as a nation. Well, I want to say that um, after more than 60 years of independence, uh, uh, one finds it difficult to say that we have actually crossed the Rubicon. Uh, the reason being that uh, we are still plagued by the problems that plagued this country more than 60 years ago. Uh, every government exists to reduce pain, okay. wants, anger and conflict. And if at this point in time we are still talking about hunger in the land, then we have every reason to decay take a deep breath and consider the, our direction. And for, because well, what is it? If, if, if you have people who are unable to feed and that number is growing by the day, sure. then we have no reason to really celebrate. I think that what we need is to do a kind of, you know, uh, go into deep thinking to find better ways of running the country or getting our people to actually uh, you know enjoy the dividends of uh, the democracy there's so much hunger in the land i must tell you and uh, i also believe that every, go every government has the capacity to do something if, if there's something that, uh, they, 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 you hear people talk about making a feast out of crumbs you may have crumbs, but you can make a fist out of it because if you have the skills, the management skills, you can make that happen. Again, you can also improvise success. Okay. If you find that a particular thing is not going right, change it. And let me tell you, government is meant to make people happy. Mm -hmm. and that is the duty of government. Like I said, to reduce pain, want, anger, and conflict in the land. And those, for me, those are the measuring rods. If a government has not been able to reduce pain, reduce uh, want, reduce anger, and reduce conflict, then it has every reason to question its direction and its motives. And that is what I'll call on Nigerian leaders to do today. Okay. Let's look at that very seriously and see how we can ameliorate the situation. All right, that's, that's interesting, Your Excellency. Your Excellency, you talked about improvising success. So how can one improvise success? I, I'm sure um, there's a larger population of Nigerians that might have to look at things from that standpoint. Well, you think outside the box. I mean, if you have a country where most people are hungry, and then people are still enjoying the same lifestyle that they enjoyed when there was, there was some level of buoyancy, then you have to look at it. Where you were driving, uh, you, you, you were buying five, six cars for people, you, maybe one would do, maybe cheaper cars, I, I, I came into office at a time when our official car was a 504 saloon. Okay. We did not buy bulletproof vehicles. <laughs> we didn't have SUVs. Those are areas. You can also cut the ground cost of governance. Even in the United States, all that the people are looking at is cutting cost of governance. Okay. Uh, frequent trips, all of those things are areas where one can really cut down and then also see how you can boost the economy. Okay. You know, uh, because uh, if you go, for instance, in our state now, agriculture is uh, something that we can really rely upon, then put more people out there. And I'm happy that somehow the governor is looking in that direction. So if you do that, you will get more people employed. And that is why I keep saying that the solution to 
some of our problems, especially at this level, it's not just giving people, young people employment, or oh, just give them, like I call them, let <laughs> dependent appointments, just go food on the table and all of that. I, I don't think that that is the best way to go about it. I think that there are other ways we can get them properly into, into areas, sectors which can absorb more people, more labor, and uh, they can make a difference in there. Uh, all right, so mm. yes, let's say I can remember your landmark speech during the APC stakeholders meeting of uh, a few months ago. You said to the governor that he has to win across the state of a lot dependent prosperity. Yes. And then, of course, um, I, I want you to look at the political situation in Cross River State from the, the difference between when you were governor and the current dispensation. Uh, why would you, you know, categorically say that the, uh, the governor was when Cross River of alert dependent prosperity? Well, you see, when, when you have a baby, you know the, the period of weaning a baby you know, gradually until it comes out of sucking breast and all that. It's dependency. You see, you... you First and foremost, you must accept the reality of the situation. When you call somebody comes out of university and you cannot get a, 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 you cannot give him a job, then there must be some way of, you know, um, getting that person to into some other trades or into having an uh, creating an enabling environment that will enable the person to be able to fend for himself. You see. They, 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 like I said, you know, every young man now goes into politics and waits at the end of the month. This was not a crossover we knew then. You know, I had a state where we had seven commissioners, three special advisors, three special assistants, three uh, uh, peers, and that was it. Every other person was having, uh, have, had something else to do. Those that could not, uh, a number of them were, went into contracts, you know, they were contract businessmen. We created an enabling environment. You could do the, the roads were even better then. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to go, yeah, sell yams or so do whatever, you could do them. The councils functioned also. The local government councils. So the local government councils were able to, ask, you know, uh, more or less absorb a lot of the pr pressure. Now everybody comes to Calabar waiting, waiting for appointments. But then they were able to do things. Uh, councils could grade roads. Councils. You know, um, they, they built uh, bus stops, they, they, uh, they maintained our roads, mm. they, they did schools, they did a number of things. So at that level, we needed people to, you know, be part of that process. I mean, if you supplied 100 trips of sand to the local government, uh, you supplied the stationery, you rebuilt uh, culverts, bus stops and all that, that, that would keep some people back there to, to do the work. But if you now have councils being just glorified <laughs> buildings there, people go there only for what we call it, this uh, certificate of origin, and then maybe for screening. <laughs> when you, that, that's all that they do. If you drive past the local government, there's no intent. Unless you really want some, one of those things, you, do, you don't even go there. So you don't even know who is there. If you ask anybody now, who is your uh, Holger or whatever, since we don't have local government, you can people know them. But those days, we knew them. If anybody, somebody retired from maybe Lagos and came down, the first thing we do is go, go know who the chairman was. I said, oh, I've just come in. I'm one of the retirees. Committees were formed. You could be part of activities, you know. But <laughs> now, those are completely blacked out. Okay. And how many people can be absorbed at the state level? The governor is constantly being bombarded by people who want to be accommodated in government. You cannot have a very, a, such a big, uh, uh, an, an unwieldy government. And the moment you get used to that kind of thing, that's how you live for the rest of your life. And that's why I said they should be weaned out of that mentality. Let's find a way, creating structures that will quietly absorb them. Okay. And that means enabling an enabling environment to be created. And this is part of what I think can be brought up maybe in a town hall mm -hmm. meeting, which I'm happy the governor wants to call. Yeah. Let people begin to focus on that and come up with, uh, you know, uh, f f uh, with programs that will do so. I also had a program then that uh, we called Skills for Work. Mm -hmm. I hear what we were doing then was get people skilled. For instance, we are, we are now talking how many... Uh, um, what do you call it? Qualified auto uh, mechanics do we have here? How many auto electricians? How many uh, plumbers do we have? Most of the people you see here are even from other states, you know. So we should have a kind of, you know, uh, a registry where we'll be able to know exactly some of those areas where we have this deficit. Okay. And once you have those deficits, then the training should be, you know, 
in, direct, in that direction. We, we have University of Cross River State now. The people you are training, are you training them in line with the skills required? Even UNICAL, mm -hmm. all of those institutions or polytechnics or whatever, you have to bring, bring them. Look at the IT now. It's raining, it's ruling. Everybody now doing uh, what we call, is even uh, do, they say remote, you're working remote. You can stay here and work for an American company. Yeah. Are we, have we set up the right uh, 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 you know, institutions or whatever to, to get our children into that kind of situation where they can stay here and get jobs? If you want to call, the, uh, maybe uh, book a, a flight now, you know, international flight, and you make a call or maybe an, a toll-free number. The voice you hear, most time you add them, ah, the person answering you from Peru. This one <laughs> is from uh, Philippines. That one from there. And they stay, they stay home. They stay at home and do it. Sure. So it is something that I think that we should go into. And I believe that that should be on the front burner okay. in the months, uh, weeks and months to come. All right, that's interesting. So if you're just joining us, the program is Inside Cresiva. And today we are looking at Cresiva State's of first year of uh, His Excellency Governor Ambassador to two in government and I have the privilege of discussing um, of these critical issues with the former Governor of Cross River State, His Excellency Clement Every. Uh, His Excellency, let's um, go into the one year of uh, Governor Ambassador to two. What's your thoughts? Well, um, I must say clearly that I'm very, very pleased with the steps he has taken so far to rescue the state. Okay. Uh, the first thing you want to say is that the state is, no, is not in a free fall. Whatever happened has been arrested and we are now, now beginning to move up. And let me tell you a very clear example. I had a mechanic uh, come in from Abuja to fix one of my vehicles here because I tried all the mechanics here, they couldn't uh, uh, fix it. So he came in and uh, it was a suspension issue, or okay. an SUV. After he fixed it, I now asked him to go and test it because you have to test it on a bad road. Okay. And for over 20, 30 minutes, I kept calling him, have you tested it? He says, I'm still looking for a pothole. I'm still looking for a bad road. And it meant so much to me. Before now, potholes were within a spitting distance of anybody. But he said, he looked. So somebody had to now direct him, OK, go in this direction. Go far, 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 several uh, kilometers away. And then make a right and so place. Try that and see. It was only then that he now was able to test it. <laughs> so that alone is a very graphic, you know, representation of the fact that even one at that aspect is already being taken care of. And that's not, it's not ended. Yeah. We see a lot of other works going on. And I'm also happy that the governor even made a statement that what is done here will be duplicated in other parts of the state, which is what is very good. That's equity, you know. I'm doing this in Calabar, I'll do it in other places. And that is fine. So I am very, very encouraged by that. The only other, other thing is that there's an aspect which I'm even very happy about is this issue of laying a very solid foundation for agriculture. Sure. You see, the soil mapping that he has, you know, uh, you know, brought into to bear, well, in, into this is going to help us a lot. Wherever you come from, they have a, a soil map that it clearly indicate the, the things that can grow there. Mm -hmm. Even up to the ranch. Oh, on the ranch, we will have this. We have this here. We have this in Odupani. We have that in. Uh, so by looking at it, you can even attract investors. And say, okay, you want to do this. This is where you go. If you want groundnuts, go to so place. That didn't exist before. So now you have a very clear roadmap. And with that roadmap, anybody can come in. So even if it's not just cross variants, even who are doing, uh, who are farmers, we will still be able to. Uh, there are other people. Who, uh, but will now come in uh, and, and, and be able to do that. And uh, I'm sure that with this will also go the acreage. That way people will be able to say, okay, can I get 1,000 hectares if I go to a place like this? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I want to use this opportunity to also ask those communities to please be liberal enough, to be generous enough, to allow those who have the capacity to develop this, to do that. Mm -hmm. I don't, it's not a situation where people now say they want to come and then you offer them just 10 hectares, which is not enough. You have to have the economies of scale. You're going to make more money. You are going to, you know, 
uh, you know, spend less if you have a large, uh, 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 you know, a wide, a large expanse of land where you can plant more and you get more. And when we have those, that, those excesses, we export them. It brings foreign exchange into, into the country. So for that, I am very, very happy, and I think that we should, we should, uh, uh, you know, loudly uh, uh, commend him for being able to bring us to that level. Okay. Now, again, the issue of irrigation, which again is a priority for him. With irrigation, you can plant all year round. We don't do this and say, so oh, it's a yearly matter, a ritual. Oh, we plant this year, once you harvest, you wait again until the next season. But with, with proper irrigation, you can plant all the year round. So we, the, the output will increase, sure. and then there will be no shortage. If you want uh, corn, you, any time you go, you find it, and you, whatever it is, you, it will be available all the time. That is a very, very good thing. But one thing I want to point out is that while doing this, I will advise the governor that he should also look into our farming practices. Because what's happening, even my own village now, is that nobody wants to weed any longer. They just mm -hmm. use chemicals. And these chemicals have destroyed so much. You, can have, you cannot find a, a, a mushroom. You cannot find these small, small snails. Even the big ones, you cannot find them. You know, you, back in my own area now, everybody is just, if you want to buy maybe uh, certain things, you have to go to one, some other communities. <laughs> we should come up with a simple technology that okay. can, an individual can purchase, locally made, that you can use to weed. You just use it, maybe around, and, and, and then it turns even the weeds into, into, into manure. That kind of thing will help us, so that we don't destroy our soils and put ourselves throw out so many things that have always uh, existed, even the uh, times of our forefathers. If I tell you that in my own village, a lot of things that we used to have before, we don't, can't find them anymore in the bushes because mm -hmm. of these chemicals that we have done. I think that that is an area that has to be really, really looked into. Now, I'm sure that uh, with time, considering the fact that the uh, governor is a very, somebody who is very methodical in doing his things, he is also going to the other areas like the industry. We have so many of these industries here, sure. which have not, um, you know, uh, been activated yet. But, you know, it's not easy. <laughs> uh, Rome was not built in a day. You can't sure. do, achieve all of that at the same time. Yeah. But I'm also very happy to hear about the 3.5 billion Afri Afrexim loan for uh, this deep sea port. Mm -hmm. A lot of people may just see it as something that is so far away and all of that. But let me tell you, that alone can generate a multiplier effect. Look at what is going on in Lagos, Apapa and all those ports. If you have something like that, even if it's ten percent of that happening in this area, I doubt if any of these uh, young men will, will remain unemployed. Sure, there will be so many opportunities for us, you know, and uh, that, that will that will create a vast, uh, you know, uh, 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 a lot of businesses, you know, interconnected businesses, and Calabar will be up and uh, up and about, uh, up, uh, up and running again. I, I was in Calabar in those days when you could go to along the coast, uh, the, the what do you call the riverside, and mm. you find all these big companies, uh, PZ, uh, Godshock, uh, SCOA, uh, and all of that kind mm. of Leonard's, Bata. Mm. And, uh, today <laughs> we don't have all of those things here, but with a seaport coming in this our way, I can bet you that. Uh, the, the, the sky will not just be a limit, it will even be the beginning. <laughs> so I think that those things need to be encouraged. And okay. um, also the issue of um, the airline. Uh, I'm happy that the governor is pursuing that at aspect a, of yeah. it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Because, you see, okay, I, I have, uh, I'm supposed to fly out of Calabar in the next uh, three, four days. But I bought a ticket last week and one of the airlines, and by yesterday they sent me a text, the flight has been cancelled. They didn't even give me an alternative. Sure. One of our very uh, highly respected young salesmen uh, was in uh, Abuja if, uh, if on Friday. He went to the airport, he had a, 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 a ticket, confirmed ticket on an airline. It was, the flight was cancelled while he was there. He bought a ticket for another airline. After a few hours, that one was cancelled. He now said, okay, Akwaibum. They said no one to cross river. He would now fly. Uh, uh, so he said, okay, I can fly to you. I'll mm -hmm. fly to you mm -hmm. and come to Calabar by road. They said no seats. And even that road, somebody who went <laughs> to, uh, when I came in from you to see me, I said, how yeah. is the road? He told me 70% bad. That was what he told me. <laughs> so all of these things are interconnected. And we, we just have to find a way of having our people fly in at, at, the, when, at their own time and, yeah. and uh, when they feel like. And mm -hmm. I think that that, issue of airline has to be given a very serious, you know, uh, very serious thought and that we must push and uh, ensure that somehow we are able to, 
you know, uh, maintain some level of, uh, you know, uh, 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 independence in that area so we don't yeah. have to be begging people to fly in uh, uh, you know to uh, to Calabar mm. that so I, I think that generally you know um, things are going well and right. like I said those industries once they find that the government is you know friendly uh, they, they, they will they will uh, investors will come around yeah and they will accept to you know take on those industries and uh, uh, keep them alive in other sectors too I've also seen that there's been some improvement, the uh, salary payment has been regular. And uh, I still remember what I told the former governor when he, I had a meeting with him a few months after he got to office. He told me, look, we don't have much money in crossover. Now, should I keep paying salaries in order to do projects? Or, you know, somehow maintain some level of balance? I tell you, please. Salary payment is not negotiable. The moment you pay salaries here now, within 10, 15 seconds, the money will always begin to have impact in Obanliku, mm. Obudu, mm. and so on. Mm. So if you stop for one month, you have crippled the entire state. So don't even talk about you know, that thing. People have to leave first before you begin to talk about all those things. And uh, I'm happy that each time we met, he kept reminding me that that piece of advice I gave him really yeah. helped. And uh, you know, he managed to get uh, you know, this kind of things uh, uh, right, so thing going. Your Excellency, yeah, so. thank you very much for this mm. thought-provoking interaction. But then, you know, as a leader that is very, very interested about Crossover, because I see that a leader of your caliber, you, you, you could have been anywhere. You could have been in any country of the world, but you've been consistent. In, you are always in functions in your community. You are always at the state level and all of that. You know, are you been offering advisory services as well? I, I want to get your own opinion on the fact that crosses of our state haven't been well represented at the national in terms of maybe getting what we deserve as a state. You know, you are also in Abuja. What would you say is responsible for that, and what advice can you give in that direction? Well, I I want to say that it's most unfortunate that uh, Crossiva, which um, ought to have a very 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 you know, uh, what would I call secured, you know, a placement at, at the, in a, a place in the hearts of those who are at the center, uh, is not getting as much. In, but um, maybe because of change of government and uh, the fact that uh, a few a few loose ends here and there. But I believe the first thing that we need is synergy. Okay. Uh, uh, the Ethiopians have a saying that if, if cobwebs unite, they can tie a lion. <laughs> so if we have a situation where there's more small crossover that they think they, they, we are, we all come together, we can, we can make a difference. I like that. And uh, I want to say that some of us are ready mm -hmm. to come out, join uh, hands with the governor, uh, National Assembly, House of Assembly members, and all of that to ignite that you know, uh, uh, recognition. Uh, in order that we can make a whole lot of uh, uh, things to happen. It's something I have discussed with the governor and he's quite open to it. And I'm sure that in the weeks to come, mm -hmm. Cross Severance will actually see a, a, lot of, a team, team approach, mm -hmm. you know, um, that, that will give us, uh, guarantee us a, a, a more, a more uh, a, you know, maybe a, a, a position of primacy, you know, okay. at, at the center. Okay. So I, we, we've learned our lessons and I uh, have no doubt whatsoever that uh, we'll be able to make that a, a difference. I also want to commend the governor because each time some of these things happen, he has always been able, even as an individual, to make certain things happen. Mm -hmm. Certain appointments were given, mm -hmm. he protested, and those things those were reversed. Mm -hmm. Even this issue now of uh, governing councils, again, that has been completely thrown out as a result of his effort. But I think that the party and the government at the center also needs to, you know, tidy up a few things because the, this, 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 there has to be a clearing house, yeah. you know, in a state like this. And don't forget, Cross River is the only APC state in the South South. So anything coming, we should <laughs> have priority. We should take, uh, should take priority before any other person. Sure. Uh, those are issues that we have been addressed. As, Not as always been at the defensive. Exactly. You know, so that uh, s s subsequently, such things will not happen again. All right. That's interesting. So if you're just joining us, the program remains 
Inside Crossover. And of course, today we are talking about the first year anniversary of His Excellency Governor Basia Dedu II. And of course, as we mark the Democracy Day, do we have any reason to celebrate as a people that we made those um, giant strides that we, we are expected to make as a nation? Those are the issues. And of course, we've had um, His Excellency giving us a lot of input on several issues. Yes, so you see, I wouldn't go without asking you as a father to comment briefly on what transpired at the, the Christmas Day House of Assembly. We, we, we saw what play, played out and then Christmas was trending because I actually checked the trend table were trending simultaneously across the entire nation and even outside. So how would you describe what transpired and of course the resolution as well? Well, I mean, <laughs> I'm not an insider. I can only rely on information brought to me by people. Mm. But I can only say now that I'm very pleased that that matter has been closed in good grace. Okay. And uh, that the governor, you know, uh, waded in to the matter, took charge. And uh, the, the legislators saw reason to do a dignified retreat from mm. the position they took before. You know, in the House of Assembly, you expect a lot of things. To, you know, this is a place where you have <laughs> people with radical views, you have different uh, things like that happen. But the fact that things like that could be done behind the, the pre governor's uh, back, you know, uh, is the worrisome part of it. Yeah, yeah. Because as more or less the father of the state, if you had some grievances, if you had grievances, you would try to table them before him. This was going on and somehow you maybe get a nod. Even though I, I, I was governor, uh, NRC, uh, you know, NR, NRC, SDP controlled the state house of assembly. When they wanted to change their speaker, they even talked to me about it, you know, and uh, we argued on a number of issues. But here is a situation where we control virtually all of it and you did that. So by doing what they eventually did yesterday, uh, um, resolving everything, at least that threat has been nullified. The governor should not be, be put, you know, uh, at the point of a spear, uh, definitely. And the next time things happen, there should be a way of, you know, uh, uh, what, what you call uh, uh, dousing tension or, uh, you, you know, uh, resolving issues without the dust generated uh, are, selling, are selling everyone's nostrils. That's what, it took everyone by, by, by surprise and uh, uh, I, w I will appeal to the legislators. Uh, they, fortunately, they've shed their swords, but for the future, they should understand that if there are any issues, that those issues should always be brought to the attention of uh, the chief executive, uh, instead of planning coups or whatever you call it, because this is a, like a democratic uh, coup. The speaker too, I, I believe, must have learned his lessons also. If you're carrying people along, you are a primus inter pares, which is a first among equals, you must, communication is very important. And that's why it is on management, they always say the end of communication is the beginning of violence. You know, if you don't communicate effectively with people, then you have a problem. And so with all of those things, I believe now that it will be possible for us to have a harmony, harmonious House of Assembly. Uh, I also think that uh, the issue of uh, assembly liaison it needs to be given very serious uh, attention. Somebody who has experienced, very highly experienced person, who should be able to manage relationship between executive and the legislature, yeah. who will be able on a day, day by day basis to be able to you know, furnish information, uh, the, the governor with the right information that will enable him to take decision or you know, interact with members. So I believe that I must commend the members too for shitting their swords because they took a very serious <laughs> position <laughs> and at some point it was like they would never go back but again that shows you that is the that is the beauty of democracy okay. even where you take extreme positions mm -hmm. at some point you see reason and that reason is seen because you consider that the interest of the state is larger than that of any individual of course so i commend them for that and i'm happy that and i'm pleased that they, we have been able to unlock the combatants from their from their deadly embrace and today we have a very good um, uh, 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 um, uh, harmonious assembly going forward. All right, thank you very much. All right, so Excellency, on the last note, this is the people's government. And of course, uh, we are in the season of sweetness. I also uh, always believe that the people also have a role. I always ask this question, even the last time we had this kind of interaction, I asked you, 
what does it take to build a cross river state of our dream so as a form of last word to the people of cross river state in building a cross river state of our dream what is the responsibility of the people well we, i mean in every society the the the, the civil populace has its own civic responsibility first you conduct yourself in line with the with the, with, with, with the, the laws of that uh, govern the society. Mm -hmm. You make your own contributions, pay your taxes, do all that you need to do to keep the society going. Mm -hmm. Once you play that part, uh, everything else goes well. I mean, one former uh, Prime Minister of India used to tell them, don't say it cannot be done, play your part. So everyone should play his part. And I said here earlier, that when, 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 when cobwebs unite, they, they can, can tie a lion. lion. So if every one of you also believes that it's part and part, he's a stakeholder in this whole thing mm -hmm. and makes his own contribution, mm -hmm. we, will, we, will, we, we will grow by exponential uh, pro progression. Um, mm -hmm. So that is really what I think that everyone should do his own. It should be unity. Uh, this is issue of uh, I'm from this side or this part of the state or I'm from that type, that uh, part of the country. The governor is not someone that discriminates. He's, he's, he has friends across the entire state. He has lived all over and has, this is something well established, not because of politics. So he is not the type of person that will begin to say, oh, this one is my own brother, this is my own sister and all of that, and then begin to, you know, favor them. So what, what, with all those things available, I don't see that any bickering around us here. The rest of it is us. Unfortunately, the problem is always from the top. <laughs> you know, the, the people down there are, are okay. It is us, the ones who are supposed to be out there to guide them, that create all the problems in the state. <laughs> so we should all understand, and our leaders, those of them who know that they have all, who have the influence, should also be honest with their people. You know, they should not try to instigate people against well, because they don't have certain th uh, certain things. This is a four-year race. If you are running uh, maybe a, a, a mile race, mm -hmm. for those who used to do miles, or uh, long, longer this thing, you, you, you all have styles. There are people who will say, okay, I will run at so so uh, pace. Then towards the end, I will do it this way. There are people who will run very fast, and then after a while, they slow down towards the end. Each person has his own style. Governor is entitled to his own style. Let nobody begin to say, oh, after one year, by one year, he should have done this, he should have done that. That's entirely open. Your, your, own, your own opinion. He has his own style. Just like footballers, each one has his own style. So don't go and force somebody to do something that's beyond him. Mm -hmm. Again, the resources and all the pot uh, possibilities are only known by him. You don't know much. And that is why a lot of people would say that they're saying that uh, never criticize a man until you have walked one mile in his, shoes. in his shoes. You just sit down there and begin to say, oh, this one has happened. It's only after the person has left office that you can really give a proper assessment. You know, <laughs> now that's why our philosophers will tell you a tree is better, a best measured when it is lying down. <laughs> that's, that's the truth. If a tree is lying down, then you can really measure from end to end. But mm. when it's there, you can just do a little and you may find that some leaves are up there which you have not included in, yeah. the, on the, in the tree. So it is that period that you have, to, you have to measure. So for now, we should just pray for him, encourage him, give him all the support, all right. and the dividends will be delivered. All right, so we've heard the advice of the people. So let's talk to the governor himself directly. What is your message, your anniversary message to the governor of Preserve State, and of course his entire team? To my governor, my friend, my brother, Governor Otu, I must commend you for the one year in office. I have seen you do so much to improve upon what you met. And I believe that you are steering the right course. You are going in the right direction. I urge you to continue along that path. You are the first governor that has been given a nickname, it says Sweet Prince. <laughs> And so a lot, a lot, you know, have to come from you. You have to justify that to a large extent. You are doing quite well. I mean, we've seen all these street lights and everything coming on. I forgot to even mention that initially. But continue to do that. And con knowing that we in Cross River State are disadvantaged. We have a serious advantage. 
I would advise that we try as much as possible to redouble our efforts and to look for alternative ways of, you know, uh, making up for our differences. Okay. And that brings me to what people say. They said, a man with a very deep eyeball starts crying from afar. <laughs> if you have a very deep eyeball yeah. and uh, you, you, tears don't come out easily and you're going to a funeral, you have to start early to see how your tears will begin to come up so that by the time you get to the place, you you find that uh, the tears will begin to come out so that people will not look at this one and say, ah, he's not crying like other people. What, what is Nothing is coming out of his eyes. So we have to plan early. We don't want to wait to become late comers. Early planning. By now, we should be have programs for a year or two ahead. Mm -hmm. Plan it so that even, even wherever we go, we will begin to we'll be ahead of other people. It's just like an exam. When you start reading early, you, 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 you'll be able to cover sufficient grounds. But if you wait to do uh, what some people call uh, emergency reading just because the timetable has come out, you may not do well. Our thoughts and prayers, and uh, I believe that uh, Cross Events will support you. I also urge them to support you. And whenever there is an issue, try as much as possible to involve them. I'm glad that you have opened up the state, and uh, part of the program is for a uh, town hall meeting, which means that Cross Events can come in and tell you a lot of things. After all, you, you never say you are all knowing. You want to learn. So with that kind of spirit, I think that uh, we'll be able to we, 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 we will get the support of cross variants. And at the end of the day, uh, we'll all be proud of your stay and your tenure. And, uh, you get all the cooperation that is desired. So I wish you well and I pray that God should continue to guide you and right as you run, run, run the state. We are prepared to support you in all the battles beyond Crossover. And all that you need is, we are, we are just a phone call away. And we will all join forces with you to achieve the results, desired results. Thank you very much. All right, thank you very much, Your Excellency. It's been a privilege interacting with you. This conversation is life-changing. And it's a privilege for us to have you on this show to talk to Crossoverians and, of course, to give the very, very valuable advice to leaders in cross civil state in different subsectors. My name is Akpala and the program remains inside cross I want to say happy anniversary to Governor Basia Dedu too and of course his deputy right honorable Peter Ode. Happy anniversary, happy anniversary. The people of cross civil state are going to queue behind you. His Excellency has said a whole lot. With a critical leader like this, all he has said has been top notch and I don't have much to say. The little I can say is to all Cresivarians. This is not the time for us to be reactive. It is a time for us to be proactive, to support the process, support the Senator Prince Basel, the two-led administration, for us to build a crossover state of our dream. Building crossover requires a collective process, and your role is very, very fundamental. I remember Chizakmala. See you some other time with another top-provoking edition of the program. Bye-bye.